Hello, everybody. Welcome to Ongoing Mastery Presenting and Speaking, the podcast and the adapt in the moment presentation skills. Because as you can see, we're in Zoom today instead of our normal Riverside because everything you flow with what happens. And speaking of flowing with what happens, we have an expert in that in Stephen Laddick. So Stephen, you have been in performance for a long time in, mm -hmm. in all sorts of things. Can you tell everybody a little bit about you? Sure. So I have, I'm, I'm, I'm a fairly classic entrepreneur. And so that is a term that gets thrown around. I feel like fairly nonchalantly these days, everybody wants to be an entrepreneur unless yep. you don't want to be one and then you don't care and you never hear about it. But anybody who's in the startup universe or mm -hmm. you know, the me generation, the digital nomad universe and like, Hey, I, I've got my startup. I, I've been, you know, I've been a remote worker for 17 years before, you know, anybody knew what remote working was. Um, I have started and run uh, co-founded or founded four businesses that have exited from at this stage. Um, I've been making it up and figuring it out uh, for quite some time. When it comes to performance, there's a couple of different aspects. One, you can't build a product or a service without selling it. And so usually my role in the products and services that I've been a part of is a front facing role. So it's working with clients, it's working in a sales or a marketing facing role. Um, mm -hmm. And that has led me to a place where something that I do most often now is what you're doing right now, um, hosting a podcast, being on a stage at a conference, um, running a virtual summit, uh, you know, being that person who is either guiding the, the conversation, who mm -hmm. is instigating the conversation or connecting others. But um, my own, you know, little personal hobby that I like to put out there as well as, you know, every so something that we could talk about as a peripheral, you know, I'm not sure how relevant is the conversation is that um, I've had the privilege of living outside the United States for 17 years. I'm I'm originally from Colorado, the United States. Mm -hmm. And so we've lived in five different countries that's based upon my wife, my wife's work, but I've had a rock and roll band in <gasps> each of those countries. Oh, and so, oh we you know, have to talk about that. So we I've have rock, to talk I've about had a rock and roll band in Costa Rica. I've had a rock and roll band in Bangkok, Thailand. And now I live here in the city of Mexico City, Mexico. And I got to be honest with you, I have the best rock and roll band that I've okay. ever had. Here and in they Mexico. are? They well, are? There are four Mexicans. It's, it's Gonzalo, uh, Johnny, Eddie, and Fabian. And, you okay. know, I, I literally, when we moved here two and a half years ago, I, I put this, uh, this band together very purposely, right? They are, you know, I, I, this was during the pandemic. We moved here in October, 2020. And um, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. And I said, look, you know, this is one of the things I've done in these other, my wife loves it. It's something that we love to do. And um, so what I did was I took out a Facebook ad and I said, this is the first time I've ever done it. Okay. So I said, look, if you're interested in being a rock and roll band, I want to put it together. I, I had the ad up for three days. I got more than a hundred applications. Um, and then I went through the process wow. over a month of auditioning first guitar players I whittled it down to about six. Uh, I found the man who is now my my guitar player. His name is Gonzalo. He, we call him Scrappy. He can play anything. He's the best guitar player in Mexico. Absolute. And then short, you know, long story short, you know, through him, we ended up connecting with bass players and keyboard players and whatnot. And now we have this group um, and we, um, you know, started out slow like anybody else. But now we do a gig every every month or so. And it's, you know, oh. I got to be honest with you, it's, it's the best party in town. So your band is named named Laddick. Okay. There we go. Cause I'm like, I'm like, and you know, just to be clear, the band name is Laddick. There we go. Perfect. So yeah. So I mean, you know, at Laddick Rock Band, if you want to check it out at Laddick Rock Band, there you go. Fantastic. And you are also the face and voice of a really popular podcast. Can you so, talk about uh, that? Yeah, sure. So a podcast that I run for a company called Open LMS, which is a company mm -hmm. I work for is uh, called the eLearn podcast. And um, we've, you know, at this stage right now, we've uh, put, I think, as, uh, as of this conversation, about 120 episodes on the street. And that's everything, you know, essentially the focus of the podcast is how do you do online learning better, right? And so if you're going to do online learning better, that means you have to look at all aspects of it. And that's how do you design learning? How do you deliver learning? How do you analyze and understand the outcomes of learning? And then, you know, we kind of have this fourth bucket that we talk about, which is essentially what are the gadgets, the processes, the, you know, the shiny objects that everybody's interested in. Obviously, mm -hmm. today, the biggest one is AI and ChatGPT and whatnot, but it's everything from learning platforms to, you know, chatbots to micro learning platforms, et cetera. 
Um, and so those are a lot, you know, a ton of great conversations, you know, and it's really about bringing out those experts and learning about who's doing what and who's successful, what are the challenges and how are they overcoming them? Awesome. Yeah. AI is definitely taking a foothold in the L&D space and the learning and development space for those who aren't part of it. Um, mm -hmm. I I want to actually run this by you and see what your take is. Um, I was at DevLearn, so one of the industry conferences, and I was on the floor and there was this very, very nice guy who was showing off his product and going, this is amazing. And it was video that was a picture of the person and then they morphed the mouth to talk. So they mm -hmm. said, see, we can have you be an instructor without you being there. And I, I was horrified down to my bones by mm -hmm. the concept. Yeah, but sure. I understand that that's because I'm a trainer. And so for me, I'm looking at it going, ah! but what do you think? Is it something that bothers you? Is it something you think is interesting? I find AI fascinating. I think it's inevitable. I think we've been using it for you know many many years now uh, in in other forms. I mean, every chatbot is a form of AI. Every you know machine learning has been in the background, and what we're seeing right now is generative AI. And so generative AI means that we're using these processes to actually create original content. Why I put that on the stage is because I think again there's an inevitability to what you know, what we're going to see in the future. We're already seeing classrooms disrupted. We're already seeing MBAs being passed and, you know, law, law exams being passed by these devices and whatnot. I have a 14 year old son last night, literally, this is literally last night. He comes to the dinner. He's like, he's like, he's like, it's everywhere. He's like, you know, he's like, he opens up Spotify. He's like, did you know Spotify has an, has a, an AI DJ? He's like, you, you know, you can literally go there. He's like, DJs are not going to be obsolete because they can literally, it's literally, it talks to you. Here's the DJ telling you what songs are coming up next. So I recently, but what what I think is, is I think that this offers us a very interesting opportunity, and this is just me going back and being a super geek to be, you know, mm -hmm. to 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 live the ethos of Star Trek, right? And at okay. the at the end of the day, our humanness is what's going to be the experience. It's what's going to be the differentiator of the future, right? So the 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 thing I put out at every dinner table now, or I have been for the last four or five months, is. There's this great movie called Goodwill Hunting, which I hope mm -hmm. you're familiar with. Yes. I'm surprised at how many people are not familiar with it. That shows my age. Hmm. But um, you know, there's this great scene, Robin Williams and Matt Damon are there at a pond and they're sitting down. This is kind of a climactic moment in the movie. And essentially, Matt Damon is Chat GPT. He is AI. He knows everything, right? He's a genius. He can read a book and remember yeah. everything. He's got a photographic memory. He can come and give you all of the answers. But what Robin Williams calls out is he says, Look, you've never actually done any of it. Right. You've never mm. had the experience. You've never seen the Sistine Chapel. You've never been in a war. You've never, you know, fallen in love and been vulnerable. And so it's great that you've got all this knowledge, but you're still you, you haven't put the humanness behind it. And so nice. what I think right. about AI and learning, what I think about AI and business and AI and, you know, everything is let's use it to create efficiencies. Let's use it to get rid of some of the processes that we maybe don't need to have somebody sitting there clicking a button for anymore. Um, and let's find out, let's find the way to grow the muscle of being more human with one another. Let's mm -hmm. use this as an opportunity to have deeper, richer experiences with one another. Let's figure out a way to use those efficiencies to actually have real conversations with one another. Okay. So I that that's what I feel. That is such a good answer because I know that my instinctive reaction is to just go right into, you know, no, I think that's a bad idea. <laughs> you know, no. And I'm like, okay, I'm being limited. How can this be, you know, because one of the problems I have is when I was still in e-learning full time, I would bring in voiceover artists to mm -hmm. do the work. And now there's, you know, well said, which is really good that's doing most of the voiceover and sure. it's a, just a computer program. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that I want a performer. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who's actually going to perform the material, not just have it read in a nice voice. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so I guess what bothers me is there's so many people who really can't tell the difference. And I'm really hoping that one of the things that can come out of this revolution that we're seeing is an education of what it looks like when a performer is involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like sure. the difference, the humanness that you're talking about is the connection point of what is it that a human can bring to this? 
they can well, bring their transformation ability with their emotions and their voice and their face and all of it. Sorry. So I offer you the hope of the future in what we could call the artisanal culinary community. Okay. Right. I mean, fast food is everywhere. You know, uh, you know, corporate food is everywhere. You know, our ability to go and literally, you know, I can pick up this device right here in the, in the country I live in. I can have anything delivered to my apartment in the next hour. Literally anything, right? I, Thai food to, you know, tacos to, you know, the, the eggs. Yep. And yet what do we crave? That artisanal experience where some, a chef is actually going to come and curate and hand create it. You know, the person who's, you know, found that interesting twist of lemons with spice that you didn't think was possible, right? So at the end of the day, we see, I think we see this pattern repeat itself over and over again in history and that, you know, here's a new disruptive technology is going to change things for sure. But ultimately, this is what we crave as humans, right? We create those experiences. And so for you, uh, you know, and then wanting that performer, I think it's absolutely a, a fantastic thing to want and be able to articulate it in a way that's going to make sense to people because you're going to have to pay a premium for it, right? Yeah. It's going to be, it's the reason why Masterclass, you know, has been successful because rather than Coursera or Udemy or whatever, where you can buy a course for $10, no, no, you got to get a subscription where it's hundreds of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Because the quality is different, because it's curated, because the performers are incredible, because the the personalities they bring in, right? And so yeah. I don't, it, there's a lot that's going to be changed for sure. There's going to be jobs that are lost. There's going to be people who are, are going to be faced with having to reinvent themselves in a big way. But I think that that's been happening for several hundred years now, uh, several thousand years for the human person, for the human society. So it's just darn fast. And yeah. We, it, we and this isn't a political, you know. We're, we don't need to go down the economic, political aspects of that right now. But there's <laughs> that. That's where the humanness comes in, right? That's yeah. that. That is the most important part of the conversation. How do we, how do we create those safety nets and those ways to lift people up in times of change? Awesome. So one of the things I want to make sure I ask you is how does ongoing mastery show up in your life, in your work? Obviously you would have some aspect of that in Lanik, the band. Mm -hmm. um, so what what are some things that, how, how are you moving yourself forward? So ongoing mastery shows up in my life in a couple of different ways. And I, it's, it's an interesting time to actually ask this question because I've now arrived at a time in life where I actually no longer feel like the young guy in the room where I'm, I'm figuring things out. There's aspects of that for sure, but I do actually enter into meetings these days in the business that I work for where I'm like, hmm, I've actually been here a few times before, you know, or, you know, this, I, 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 I've, I've foreseen, I can foresee how this will play out simply because I've had these conversations before. Yeah. So experience in ongoing, you know, experience is a huge piece of the recipe, a key, not only key ingredient, but a huge, like, I want to say a voluminous rep, you know, um, por portion of the recipe of mastery for sure. This is where we get the 10,000, you know, repetitions or, you know, yep. building habits or any of these things, right? So how does it show up? It's showing up in my life in ways where it's like, wow, these are things that I've done over and over again. And I feel incredibly comfortable doing them because I've been doing them for so long podcasting, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the technology, booking the guests, you know, the, the process to make sure that they show up. And then how do you then the post, the, the post-production process, and then the publishing and the syndication and the marketing, all of that I've been doing for so long now that I have a team. I know mm -hmm. how to explain it to you. you. You and I, we could create probably a, create a class and how to start and publish a podcast right now, extemporaneously, just because I'm so comfortable with it. Right. Awesome. And then, you know, the, the beyond experience though, is that muscle of using that experience to to then actually create efficiencies and create effectiveness. Mm -hmm. So hmm, what did I do in the past? What, you know, it, I got to a certain level or I, I, I had certain things that were successful. Do I want to push and, you know, okay, like what, what can I do differently? You know, because you're, you're always looking back and saying, what can I do differently? How can I continue to grow? How can I um, experience newness? How can I experience that, you know, put myself in those places of uncomfortability to mm. continue to refine my practice? And those are things, let's take it back to the podcast example of, 
you know, how can I improve the the introduction? You know, how can, can I use it? Could I use the music in a different way? You know, could I look, can I punch above my weight maybe and ask for some, you know, look, look for those guests that maybe I think are outside my reach. Those types of things um, are ways that I think that you continue to make that capital M in mastery. Awesome. Uh, so I guess one more question for you would be, especially because, you know, your background in e-learning and in the learning and development space, not everyone is comfortable setting up a learning from failure model, but we learn a lot more from failure than we do from success. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you think we should get, help people see the value in the fact that failure is not a sin, it's not a crime, it's not a problem, it's actually part of the evolution of people? It's mm. part of our process. Hundred percent. Do I guess maybe the uh, the one way to approach that is to understand or maybe offer the hypothesis that we don't have successes. We only have things that don't fail, right? Ooh, and I like so, that. Well, and so if you think about it, ultimately, let's just remove the word success for a second and talk about the word outcome. Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately, what we're trying to do when we say we want to be successful is that we're trying to achieve an outcome. And when we're unable to get to that outcome, we call it failure, right? Because, oh, and let's just take a typical sales process, right? Like, oh, I created this service and I went out and I did something and then nobody bought it. So there's a, we would call it a failure. I didn't get the outcome. Okay. So I changed the marketing a little bit and oh, maybe I had a little bit of people buy it. And, and so there's a little, you know, but I didn't get that big outcome, right? And so ultimately we're always working towards an outcome and I'm a huge, huge believer in, you know, being very clear about what you're trying to achieve, because you, I don't think that you can actually arrive at any place that you can't clearly define for yourself. Yep. You know, it's, it's very super, I, you know, I didn't invent that. It's been around forever, but when we're thinking about success and failure, it's like, okay, let's not talk about being successful. Let's talk about what does that look like? What is the outcome that we want to be? Is it, so do I want to start a company and have, uh, you know, a hundred thousand employees and, you know, be a billionaire? Is that success? Or, you know, Hey, really, actually what I want is I want to, I want to just, I want to work with 10 buddies who I really love. And, you know, we, we make a couple of million dollars a year so that everybody has a nice salary and we all kind of have really great life work balance. Like what's that outcome. Mm -hmm. And that way, as you iterate over time, you're not really thinking, Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm feeling it's like, mm, I didn't get to that outcome. So what do I need to change in order to achieve that? I like that. And I, I'm just imagining the pull quotes from this right now. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, I can picture it in my this head. This was not planned. I'm sorry. This is not planned. This is just <laughs> this stuff is like, I think about all the time. Oh, very cool. Again, gray hair, gray hair. It's been, it's been hey, hey I'm, I would have it if it weren't for the lovely thing of dying. I am a big <laughs> fan of dying. Um, no, so where should people that want to know more about you, where would they find you? So uh, the, the, the best place to find me is thisislatic.com. Okay. So that's, that's a website that, mm -hmm. that where you can, you know, as a, as a side project, as a, you know, something that I love to do, I love to help people build these muscles. And so one piece that I said, but was remiss, I did not mention is, you know, one of the ways that um, I have seen mastery is by building foundations that, that give you the support and give you the, ultimately that platform that you need in order to reach for that net outcome or take that risk or stretch or build that muscle in some mm -hmm. other way. Right. And so if somebody wanted to find me, you know, this is like the way to do in, and, and that's on all social media, on LinkedIn, on, you know, like, like I said, a website as well. And what you'll find is, you know, I have something that I called a three pillar program. And that program really looks at it. I think holistically, what mm -hmm. I say is like, you can live fit, which is physical and mental health. You can live fulfilled, which is around, spirituality and relationships and purpose and those kinds of things. And you can live free. And that's how, you know, how are you building the foundations around finance and quality of life and those kinds of things. So looking mm -hmm. at mastery through the perspective of what foundations can I build so that I feel completely safe in taking a risk. Mm. That is the, that's the, the challenge or the enticement that I offer to those people who are listening right now. Nice. Nice. And actually, I think, um, I think that might be so, so if you were going to give advice mm -hmm. to people, the one thing that they should consider in supporting their mastery, would it be look at your foundations? That's where, you know, that's where I would go is 
you know, when we're looking at saying like, I want to master something, mm -hmm. usually that means I'm going to have to put a lot of time and effort, you know, again, I would start from the place of what is I want to, what is the outcome? What does mastery actually mean to me? Is that I'm, I'm, I'm playing a musical instrument, like, like, you know, um, like a concert pianist, or is that, you know what, I have really great life balance right now, work life balance. And that's, that, that's mastery of life to me right now. Like, so getting really, really clear about what you want that outcome to be, mm -hmm. and then ask yourself, what is it that I need to have in place in order to be able to, you know, definitively say to myself, you know, I've, I've achieved that and I'm able to take those risks now to continue to grow and to continue to move forward. So that is the one place I would point people is understand and be, be able to clearly articulate that outcome of mastery that you want to have, yeah. and then give yourself, you know, put in place those things that are going to support you. Is it you know, do you need a little bit more finance so you, maybe you can go, go learn, go, go get a new degree, go get a new skill, you know, and what do I, do you need to put, you know, uh, work into your relationship so that you have this really solid support network with friends, with your partner, with whomever it is, so that no matter what, you know, that you got people you can turn to that they're going to say, Hey, you can do it. You know, is there something about your health, your mental, whatever that, you know, you need to either level up your game or change so that, you know, you're going to wake up every day with energy and with, you know, the ability to get out there and get it um, and look at, you know, move forward in that outcome. So that's how I, I'm, I'm, I know it's kind of a longer answer, but that's how I would tie all of those things together to say, that's the one thing I would work on. Awesome. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to not only listening to your podcast, but seeing, I'm going to track down your band and uh, <laughs> I, I'm hoping you're on YouTube. Oh, Instagram. So you're on at, Instagram. Okay. I'll find you on Atlantic, Instagram. Atlantic rock band on Instagram and you can see some clips there for sure. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and say everybody for ongoing mastery presenting and speaking. Thank you for watching and listening and we'll see you next time.